Hi, Deidre here from Our Upcycled Life. Welcome to my channel. Today is all about air dry clay and there's all kinds of inspiration in here. I'm gonna show you how you can create texture on your air dry clay, how you can make really cute little trinket dishes, DIY beads, how you can add it as an embellishment on wooden signs, and how I upcycle a glass jar with some air dry clay. We got lots of work, let's get started. Okay, I get so excited when I'm working with air dry clay. I got a brand new pack I just picked up at Dollarama for $1.75. This stuff works really well. And I'm gonna show you all kinds of different things that you can use in your house to add texture to your clay before you make your projects. I've got a basket right full of stuff, so let's get started. I've just taken off a piece of the clay, kind of flatten it out a little bit. I like to use these so I can have my clay all the same um, width. These are just wooden slats from a shutter that I like that width on them. It's perfect. Set it down beside your clay and when you roll, when it hits that wood, it won't roll it any thinner and you have a consistent width all the way through. First thing I'm going to show you, this is drawer liner from the dollar store and when you put it on your air dry clay and just roll it lightly it creates the most fantastic texture in your clay look at that isn't that wonderful the next thing that you can use for fantastic texture is a stencil if you have stencils laying around in your cla in your craft room just set it down on the air dry clay and just lightly take your rolling pin over it and you have all kinds of beautiful texture in your clay. Do you have a doily in your house anywhere? Grab one and try this or if you're at the thrift store next time, pick one up because when you roll that into that clay Look at that, gorgeous. I like to use twine to create texture. You can just weave it back and forth on your piece of clay. And it can be close, it can be far away. And then just take your ruler and just roll up and down. And it leaves a really neat impression. And then I just like to use, I'm gonna make these all into little ornaments. I'm just gonna punch out a piece and you have really great texture on that. I had a bowl of dried oranges and you just wanna take it and you can just press it right into the clay. You don't have to press really hard, just enough to get an impression pull it away and look at that. I'm gonna use my little cutter and just cut exactly where I want. Isn't that neat? Look through your pens and your pencils. This one has a really neat end. When you press it into the clay, it leaves a little circle with a circle in the middle, which is a really neat little texture and you can also just roll it along and the sides of it create a really neat texture. I'm just going to cut those out. That one looks really neat and then I'm going to do a few more of these so the cutter will get a, a bunch of it in it. A couple more. And then I'm just going to cut it out. And look at that. Another thing that you can use is a comb. And this one you can just kind of lay into the clay along as you go. Push along into it and it creates all these little lines. 
And I'm gonna cut that out. And that looks really neat. I had a leaf of a faux plant and they make really neat texture too. Just lay it down and just kind of roll it in a little bit. I'm gonna make a couple of these because it's got the vein in the back of the leaf that imprints really neat. And that's kind of a really different texture with that. I'm going to just punch out a little piece. Okay. I also had this piece of a faux plant and I think it'll look really impressive on this air dry clay too. And you don't have to be really precise. You can just kind of even be sloppy about it, but look at that. And then we're gonna cut out, I think I'll cut out a piece right here. There you go. Another piece of a faux pant that I found. I'm kind of rummaging all through my house and everything I look at, I kind of see the potential on how you can imprint your clay with it. It's, it's really fun. And this one, I'm just gonna roll it along and then peel it off and that looks so amazing. And there, that one is cut out into a little ornament. Now I've had this in my crafting stash forever. It's an actual roller with little flowers um, on it. And I'm just gonna press it in and it gives a really neat floral pattern. I'm gonna pick a area where I can get some flowers in to punch it out. Other things that you can use, forks and spoons. I love just taking the back of the spoon and just pressing it in and it just makes a really kind of neat indent into it. And you can go along and press it in. And you can kind of just imagine doing all of these air dried clay projects and using these uh, techniques to create some one of a kind pieces. And you can use the tail end of a fork and press it down. And this one's a spoon. And what's this one? It's a fork. Clothes pins. If you press the clothes pin down into the clay, it works really great too. Makes kind of a, a fun pattern in that clay. And then you can just punch out. That looks really neat. I love using stamps. This is a really cute one. It's a butterfly. And you can just press it right into the clay and you're left with a beautiful butterfly. This one's a couple of flowers. This one actually imprints really pretty. Just press it in lightly. And you can see the beautiful butterfly and the flowers. I'm gonna just cut out that butterfly. And then I think this one I'm going to do the leaves and that looks really neat too and this is just peel off sticky tape that I think I picked up at the um, dollar store of burlap and you can just lay it down on top and then just take your roller and roll it right in and it leaves that burlap impression on the clay. I'm just gonna cut some of that out. Really neat texture. I have a wicker basket and I love this pattern right here. I can just take this clay and just kind of push it into that. 
and then you're left with a really neat pattern from that. I'm gonna take my punch. I think I'll cut this right here. And that leaves a really neat pattern on that. My glue stick, it kind of has an open circle on the bottom. It creates really neat texture too. You can just press it right into your clay. Any kind of pattern, you just kind of get creative. And then that's what you're left with. And you can just take my cutter, cut out a piece. It's fantastic. My most favorite thing to do impressions of is the faux greenery too. I'm just gonna just lightly, just kinda roll up and down on that. The more the better. And look at all that texture that you get just from that one little piece of greenery. And then you can just pick a spot where you wanna cut out the nice pattern. And you're left with that. Now I'm gonna turn these all into little ornaments. I just have a little tool it's just got a little circle on the end. Also have this tool that's really great for making little holes, but you can use a wooden skewer, you can use a straw and just make little holes in the top. So if you wanna put a little bit of twine through it, you can string it through. But you can see how you can just kind of go through your house and see what you have that you can create texture with and then make fabulous projects. I'm gonna let these dry, put a little bit of jute twine through them, and then I love to attach them to my Christmas presents or to birthday gifts. And they're kind of one of a kind and really personal. air dry clay that I'm going to be using for this project. I got this off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below in the description for this product and you can also find it at the dollar store and it works just as well. Break off a piece of the clay of the size of the project that you want to make and then I like using these two little pieces of wood. They're a nice guide for when you're rolling out. They're about a quarter of an inch thick and you'll the rolling pin will only allow you to roll it to that thickness and it'll be even across your whole project that you're rolling out. After you've taken your clay out of the package, make sure you put it back in a sealable plastic bag because you don't want the air getting at it and having it dry out. So store it really well. It's all rolled out nice and even and now we're ready to start the project. For this first little dish, I'm going to use one of these stencils. I bought these stencils on Amazon. I think it came in a package of 10, and this is the one that I'm going to pick out. Place your stencil right on top, centered on the air dry clay, and then you're gonna put your guides on and just gently roll your rolling pin back and forth so you can have that impression of the stencil in your air dried clay. And when you peel off the stencil, you'll see the beautiful imprint that it makes. You can see all the raised texture from rolling that into the air dry clay. I'm gonna use this wooden bowl that I found at the thrift store as a template to cut around where I put that stencil. I'm just gonna lay it gently down on the air dye clay. You don't wanna press it down because when you do, it's going to kind of squish the clay down and not make a nice pretty edge. So I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and just trace around that whole bowl. So it's got a little bit of a rippled edge, which I really like. And I'm gonna go around the whole bowl and then take off the excess air dry clay. Make sure you're doing this on a work surface that it doesn't matter if you maybe put little nicks and dents in your table. This is my craft table, so um, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna gently lift off that bowl and just peel away any of that excess air dry clay around the edge so I have the rippled um, edge all along that whole stenciled area. And I'm just gonna dip my fingers in a little bit of water just to smooth that edge and just make it nice and pretty. A 
Okay, now we need some cling wrap. You're just gonna cut off the size of the bowl that we're doing, and we're going to set that air dry clay that we just did inside the bowl, and as it dries, it will take the shape of that bowl, and the saran wrap will prevent it from sticking. Just very gently, you don't want to touch it too much where we've gone over with the stencil, just very gently, just push it into that bowl so it molds to that shape. Make sure your cling wrap isn't wrinkled too much. And now we're ready just to set it aside and let it dry. The process of drying will determine your weather and how hot or cold it is in your area. Okay, now we're ready to do the second one and we're gonna roll it out the same way. Use the little pieces of wood so it's all the same thickness. If you have a chance, you should go on Pinterest or I'll put a link to my Pinterest below because I have a board just for air dry clay and there's so many projects that you can do with this. Um, I kind of don't even know where to start when I get uh, in that Pinterest uh, downward spiral because really it's unbelievable what you can make with this air dry clay. And for this second uh, trinket dish, I'm going to use this doily that I have. I'm gonna lay it right in the center. And again, I'm just gonna use my rolling pin and just gently roll back and forth until I've got that doily imprinted into that air dry clay. And this doily makes an amazing texture in this clay. I'm just gonna very gently just lift it up so we don't distort it at all. And isn't this fantastic? Look at the texture from that doily. You'll find if you start making these that you'll be looking around your house for anything that has texture that you can use um, for your air dry clay projects. Now this one I'm going to use this round bowl and again just going to use my X-Acto knife cut around the edge so that it's the exact same size and then we'll put the saran wrap in the bowl very gently put that um, into the bowl and let it dry. These make really great gifts too, and they're affordable, and they're usually one of a kind, so it's nice when you can give that to somebody as a gift. And the only thing is, is you have to kind of remember that you've got to let it set aside, and sometimes it takes a day or two for it to completely dry before you're ready to finish it off. So you have to take that into account if you are making it for a gift. I'm just gonna very gently put the saran wrap in, make sure there's not very many wrinkles in it, and just set that right in the bowl very gently because you don't want to press too hard and lose any of that texture that you just made, and press it right in, set it aside, and let it dry. And now we're ready to do the last one. Roll it out so it's all the same thickness, and I have a little plastic dish that I'm going to use as my template for this one. So I'm rolling it out to make sure that it's the same size so I can cut around it. Okay, now this is fun. This is a piece of drawer liner from the dollar store. And it has such a neat texture to it when you roll it out. Um, you won't believe how cool this is when you roll the rolling pin across it. Just really gently, just so you can get that texture through in that air dry clay. And just look at the imprint that it makes on that air dry clay. It is so cool, almost like a diamond grid. And I'm just gonna put that dish over top. And again, take my X-Acto knife, cut around the edge so it's all um, nice and even, and then take off the excess air dry clay. I'm just gonna really gently lift it up off that table. You don't wanna distort it or lose any of that imprint that you just put on it. And I'm going to just take my fingers with a little bit of water, smooth out the edge so it looks really nice and pretty. And then we're ready to put it in the dish. I'm gonna take the saran wrap, make sure it's uh, no wrinkles in it, get it as flat as I can. And then just place that right in that square dish. I found the square dish was a little bit harder to get it even all around the edges. So just play with it until it looks like it's even along all four corners. And then we're just gonna set them aside and let them dry. 
Okay, I actually was away for the weekend. I let them sit in a corner where it was nice and dry up in my craft room. So it's actually been three days that these have cured and they're completely dry now. So I'm just gonna really gently lift them out of the dish and uh, take off the saran wrap and we're ready to finish them off. You'll know when they're completely dry because there won't be any different colors of discoloration in it that look wet and then dry. It should be all one consistent color kind of like a white chalky color and I'm just going to take this um, scuff pad that I have and just gently go around all three of the pieces and just get rid of any little rough edges or any little bits just to make a nice smooth finish. You don't want to use anything rougher than this like a sandpaper you just want this scour pad or scuff pad. I'll put a link down below in the description for this one that I'm using. Now we're ready to paint. I've mixed these up with my acrylic paint. You can use acrylic paint, chalk paint, latex paint, spray paint, whatever you want. It all works perfect on these. I had a bunch of acrylic paint and I had some colors that I knew that I wanted to do. So I kind of mixed them up together to get these. And I'm just going to um, just use a regular paintbrush and just brush it on and now you want to make sure you get it all in the little nooks and crannies so it might take a little bit of time because it's really textured but it looks beautiful when it's all finished. And I love the way this scalloped dish turned out and I'm going to paint it with this uh, nice kind of primitive yellow and it's just one that I mixed up a couple different colors of my acrylic paint. I put in some yellow and then I added a little bit of uh, some brown acrylic paint to make this color and I'm loving it. And for the last one, I'm just going to paint it black and I think it's going to really make that texture stand out. And I really want to seal these really well, so I'm going to use this uh, polyurethane polyacrylic sealer spray paint, and it will seal it right up really nice. Um, and that way you can put your little bits of jewelry or little home decor, or actually I really like the look of an air dry plant in these. And um, just spray the front and the back, give them a really good coat, and we'll be ready to finish them off. I thought these would be really cute if I used these little wooden beads to make um, feet on two of the dishes. So I'm just gonna use my hot glue gun. I use the Gorilla hot glue and these beads I got off of Amazon. I'm just gonna glue them so they're kind of centered. I'm gonna put three on this one and then um, four on the black one and that will finish it up. I love the scalloped edge on this and the imprint from the stencil was perfect for this type of a shape and I love that yellow color. The terracotta on this using the doily is fantastic. Make sure if you're at the thrift store pick up a doily to try this technique and I love just the neutral color of the black and almost like the diamond pattern on this little square one. So if you haven't tried air dry clay, you've got to grab some. Get some off of Amazon or grab some at the dollar store the next time you're there and give this project a try. These beads are so easy to create with air dry clay. Every air dry clay is going to be a different color. As I'll show you right here, this is the DAS and it's more of a white color. This is some air dry clay that I picked up at the dollar store and it's more of a stone color. So just pick what color you would like your beads to be, but that doesn't have to end at that. You can always paint your beads afterwards if you want them a specific color, but if you wanna keep them natural, keep in mind with the type of clay that you're using, that's the color that they will dry. And if you stick right through to the end, I'll show you how I paint mine. Really simple and really easy too. So we're gonna get started making some beads. To make our beads, I'm going to be using the dollar store air dry clay. I find it works really well and it's affordable. It's $1.75 for a full pack. That's going to give you a lot of beads. I've got some cornstarch 
and I have a teaspoon, measuring spoon, and a skewer. I just take a little bit of the cornstarch and just put it in the spoon because you don't want your clay to stick in it. And I find that the teaspoon is the perfect size for the bead that I want to use. Of course, every project's gonna be different for every person. So just pick out the size that works the best for your project. Take off all the extra that you're not gonna need. And because we have the cornstarch on that, it'll peel off really easy. And you just wanna roll it into a ball until it's the shape of a bead. Now, these aren't going to be completely perfect like a wooden bead because it's really hard to get them uniform, but they're pretty close. And you can just work it with your finger. I kind of like it when they're not perfect anyways. Get your skewer, poke it through the middle. Make sure it's right through the middle. You're gonna lose a little bit of your shape when you put it on the skewer, but you can always fix it after. I always like to poke it through both ends. Roll it again, just a little bit. And how easy is that? We've just made a bead. You can get creative with all kinds of different shapes when you're making beads. You can freehand them all. You don't want, if you don't want them all uniform, the same size, you can roll them out so they're a bit more flat. Poke through. Just have fun with it. And that's what this is all about. Pull it off, and there you have a cylinder bead. Just like that. I'm gonna just make round ones though, because I'm going to make a garland when they're all finished, and I'll show you how beautiful it turns out. these all done. It took maybe five minutes to put these all together. I'm going to set them aside. It's going to take overnight for them to dry and then I'm going to show you how I paint them and make them into a project. 24 hours later and my beads are all dry. You can see they don't have any discoloration in that darker clay look and if they're a little bit rough in spots this is just like a I think this might be a 120 sandpaper you can just really lightly just kind of give it a sanding get rid of all those little burrs that there might be on the little ends that you poked through and then i'm going to paint these to paint these you need a little container with a lid these are actually just a chocolate container that i had left over for christmas it's going to work perfect for this project i always save these little plastic containers and you wanna make sure that the lid fits on tight. This one does, so it works good. We're just gonna take some of my homemade chalk paint. You don't need very much. We're just gonna pour just a little bit in. You don't want too much. You can always add more later, but this is such a fantastic, fast way to paint beads. You just want a couple drops of water to make it flow better. I'm going to give these beads a little bit of texture. I have some sand. I'm going to take some of the finer sand from the bottom and I'm just going to put it right into that paint. And then I'm going to take my skewer and just mix it all up. Now, I might not have mixed quite enough to do all of the beads. That's okay. We're gonna throw in a couple beads at a time. I'm gonna put in two, maybe three. Put the lid on. And all you have to do, shake them. I'm sorry, it's noisy. You just shake them around and it paints your beads that fast. So I'm just gonna work away and finish the rest of these. I mixed up a little bit more paint and sand because I didn't have quite enough, but look at all of my beads are painted so fast. Now what we do next is I've got a paper plate and you're just going to dump them out on the paper plate. 
Next step, we wanna dry these beads. I'm gonna use my heat gun. You don't wanna use a hair dryer because as soon as you turn the hair dryer on, it's gonna blow your beads right off of the plate. So we're just gonna use the heat gun on low and get these dried. These are all dry and they turned out perfect. Look at the texture on these. And so easy to make. And also if you wanted to put um, a top coat on these, you can do this exact same process that we just did with some polyacrylic and it would seal it all up. I wanna keep this kind of a matte color so I'm not gonna put a top sealer on them. But I'm gonna turn these all into a really pr pretty garland. So let's put that together. I'm gonna to make a really simple, easy, tassel. I have a full tutorial on how to make one of these. They're so easy and it has the full instructions right from start to finish. If you want to check that out, I'll put the link to that down in the description. I finished off the tassel and I love the way that it turned out. Nice and fluffy on the bottom. This is just jute that I bought at the dollar store. But I'm also gonna make a hang tag for the other side and I wanted to show you what I've got here. I had a shutter that was broken and I took all of the slats out and this is what they are. I painted them with some white chalk paint and these are gonna all get turned into little hang tags. They sell fantastic and these were all free from this broken shutter. So this is a fantastic way to upcycle these. I'm gonna put a nice quote here add it to the other end of my garland and finish it off. So I'm gonna work on that right now. I've printed off a little quote on my laser jet printer. I'm gonna use Mod Podge reverse graphic method and put it on the tag. tip when you're stringing beads. You can put masking tape on this but I find it bulks it up too much and if you have your string just the exact same size as your bead then it makes it difficult to put it through. I like using a little bit of fabric glue. You can use um, any type of glue actually and I just like to just dip the end into the little bit of the fabric glue and then just work it with my finger and it'll harden it right up and make it way easier to string your beads and it won't fray either. That might help you out. This is such an easy DIY and I love the way it's got the textured paint on them. Our little hang tag made out of a shutter slat, our hand handmade tassel. It's so adorable and so easy to do and so much cheaper than using wooden beads. So give this a try, or if you've already tried it, let me know down in the comments how you made out. Finding lots of tips and tricks and inspiration here. So if you find some salvaged wood of your of your own, you can make some signs. I'm just taking some 80 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding this down because it had a really glossy finish on it and I want my paint to be able to adhere to it. So taking it right down to the bare wood. I have some wood filler. I'm gonna fill up those holes, let it dry and then get painting. When my, I'm making my signs and I want them to have that distressed old look, I always start with the base black. I find when I'm sanding it afterwards, that black peeks through and it just gives it that aged look. But that's my preference. You don't have to do that step. Now, if you missed my video on how to DIY your own silicone molds, you have to go back and watch it after this video because you can make your own molds and you can incorporate it into so many different DIY projects. This is a mold that I used with a stamp and I am going to incorporate this into my sign using some air dry clay, pressed it into the mold and I'm just going to make sure the back is nice and flat and then we're gonna peel it out and I have this gorgeous air dry clay uh, piece that I can put on my sign. I'm going to clean it up a little bit 
and then set it aside and let it dry. Now this is the next day. I used my Gorilla Glue to glue that clay embellishment on the top and I'm just putting on a couple coats of my white homemade chalk paint and taking in and just dry brushing around that mold with a little bit of that black chalk paint and one last distressing around the outside. If you're a seamstress or love to sew, you're gonna love this graphic. Same process, Mod Posh reverse graphic transfer method. As far as making signs, this is the most affordable way. You don't have to buy vinyl, you don't have to buy stencils. All you need is a little bit of Mod Posh paper and a printer. And you don't even need a laser jet printer. You can do this process with an inkjet printer also. And I have some videos comparing those two printers together so you can see the difference. I printed these graphics off on two or three different sheets, sizing them up the way that I wanted them to fit on the sign. And it is absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love this graphic. Again, it's available in my Etsy store. So I've taken that boring piece of pine and this is what I've turned it into. So if you're looking for a way to make a little bit of extra spending money, making signs is the way to go and they always sell really well. this huge pickle jar that I've washed out really well sometimes it's really hard to get the pickle smell out little tip soak it overnight in a little bit of bleach in your kitchen sink I've taken it outside and I'm gonna give it just a light coat of spray paint this will just help my project adhere better than just being on straight glass for this project I'm using some modeling clay air dry clay that I can find at my dollar store and it works really well. Uh, if you can't find it at your dollar store, you can always find it at your local craft store or Michael's or on Amazon and the DAS modeling clay works really well. I'm gonna flatten this out until it's about a quarter of an inch thin and just kind of flipping it over. I've got it on a piece of parchment paper that's dusted with a little bit of cornstarch and I'm just gonna roll it out until I know that it'll almost go around my whole jar. Before we put the clay on the jar, I'm coating it with just a light coat of my Mod Podge matte. You can use any type of Mod Podge gloss matte because we're not gonna see it. It's going to be underneath and it's acting as a glue on the clay. Now while the Mod Podge is still wet, we're going to roll it in that air dry clay and shape it around that pickle jar. Um, it might not fit I might need a little to add a little bit more, but once we get it on the jar, we're gonna mold it and shape it so it fits really well around the edges and everything. So you can always add little bits if you need to, uh, to get it completely covered. Okay, I got it completely covered. I had to add little bits and pieces of clay here and there. Now I haven't completely covered the bottom, but I've rolled it around the edge a little bit. And now I'm just taking some water, dipping my fingers in the water, and I'm just smoothing it out, making sure that it's really blended in really well. And I haven't missed any places uh, with some clay and just making sure that it's really sealed well around that whole pickle jar. Now I have this metal table that I have in my shed that I paint on. It's covered in paint, but when I put the parchment paper down and roll that pickle jar in it, the texture it creates from all that paint on the table is fantastic. So a mess has created something beautiful. Now I'm gonna use one of my molds that I made. I just posted a video, DIY silicone molds, and what you can create for your DIY projects with these molds are beautiful. This is just one of them. I used a little dollar store frame to create this mold and I'm putting the air dry clay into it. And then very carefully, I'm going to take it out of the mold and isn't this gorgeous? We're gonna add this right into the middle of the pickle jar. Now to get this to stick to our jar, I'm gonna use a paintbrush. The bristles are kind of stiff in this. We're going to dip it in some water and then press it quite hard into that clay. And we're going to do the top of that piece with the frame mold and add some water onto that and scratch it up a little bit. And then we're going to very carefully press it down. You don't wanna press it too hard because you don't wanna lose any of that detail in the molds and set it aside and let it dry. Now I decided I wanted to add two little handles on either side. So I've rolled out a piece of the clay and I'm just gonna shape it until I like the shape of it and it looks like a handle. It's gonna prove to be a little bit tricky to get both sides the same, but I'm gonna do the best that I can and just kind of mold it and press it into that clay so it attaches really well. 
Once you see this all finished, you will never throw out another glass jar in your recycling bin. You will want to turn all of them into little mini crocs. I'm obsessed. Okay, I think I'm happy with the way that it looks. I've got the handles on, the mold on the front. We're gonna set it aside and let it dry overnight. Now, I don't want you all to panic because the next day, this is what it looks like. Air dry clay shrinks. So when we put it around the jar, as it dries, it pulls apart and it creates these fantastic cracks. So, but we're gonna embrace it and I'm gonna show you the next step. We are now gonna decoupage over this whole pickle jar. I've got one ply of a napkin and I've tore it into little pieces and we're just using the Mod Podge mat and we're going to add those pieces all over that whole pickle jar. Just putting a light coat of Mod Podge over each piece of that little torn napkin and then getting the next one and layering it up until it's completely covered. And this is what it looks like. You can still see the indents of the cracks, which we want to embrace, but it's going to make it nice and sturdy and strong. It's also giving it a very authentic look of an old antique crock. If you've never used air dry clay before, don't be intimidated. It's really easy to work with, and I didn't use any special tools to create this crock. I've got it completely covered with that torn napkin. Now I didn't put any on the mold because it will be fine and it has adhered really well, but we're gonna set this aside, let it dry completely before we finish it off. It took a couple hours for it to dry completely, but now it's ready to paint. I'm mixing up just some acrylic paint and I'm trying to get the look of an antique crock, which is almost like a linen color that I see in most photos. And I'm going to apply this with a sponge. The sponge will just give that texture of a crock more than if you have brush strokes in it. And you can see as I'm applying that paint, you're still gonna see those big cracks and you're gonna see all that texture just by putting a light coat of that acrylic paint on. I had some of this antiquing dust from Country Chic and I'm gonna use that. I think it's just gonna give it a little bit more of an aged look. You can also use a dark wax or you could even rub some mud into it or some um, dirt and it would give you kind of the same effect. This is just a dust that you just kind of dab on. It's gonna stay in the little nooks and crannies and just give it more of an aged look. Now I created these graphics. They're available in my Etsy store. If you wanna try this project for yourself, I'll put the link down below in the description, but I absolutely love them. And I'm, for this one, only gonna use the number five. So I've cut that out and we're going to apply it right in the middle of that frame. I printed this graphic off on my LaserJet printer, making sure to reverse the text and I sized it. I'm putting a liberal amount of Mod Podge completely over it. You wanna put quite a bit on because the clay is absorbent and you might not have a really good transfer if you don't get enough Mod Podge on there. I've let it sit overnight. This is the next day, put a little tiny bit of water on it. You wanna go really slow or you're going to reactivate that clay. Do little small sections, dip your finger back in the water if you need to, and just take your time and you'll get a great graphic transfer. Now that I've got that all done, I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna seal it up with a polyacrylic sealer using the matte finish. And I am in love with this. I've made some of these and I always really love the way that they turned out, so that's why I wanted to share this technique with you today. And like I said, you'll never look at glass jars the same way now. Imagine all of the possibilities. And if you haven't had a chance to check out my video where I DIY'd some silicone molds, you gotta watch that one. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and it's inspired you to try to make one of these yourself. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.